Hello, thank you for joining me in this tutorial. My name is Carol Lyle Shaw, and this is a brief tutorial on making a face binding for your modern quilt. So first of all, what is a face binding? It is very simply a binding that instead of the traditional strips around the outside of the edge of the quilt, the four edges, you instead will use facing strips of fabric that are actually attached and sewn down on the back of the quilt. And here's a close up of what it looks like from the back of this mini, and this is the mini I'll be using in this tutorial. And as you can see, you'll, the facing strips, as we call them, come together at the corners and they're sewn down by hand on the back of the quilt, but you're actually going to attach them starting from the front. Why use a face binding? Well, I use them mainly for my modern quilts because I really love the effect of an infinite edge on the quilt. Uh, modern quilts, like modern art, are hung or displayed, put on your bed, and that design just sort of goes off beyond the edge of the quilt into space. That's just a lovely effect uh, that is very modern, crisp, and clean. Now, if this is your first time making a uh, face binding, I do suggest that you practice by making a mini quilt first, just use some scrap fabric, quilt it down, just as you would uh, your normal work, and then uh, start by practicing on this uh, practice quilt first. So here's the first step. You're going to square up and measure your quilt, but you'll take four measurements, one for each side of the quilt. Then you'll cut four two and a half inch wide facing strips, we call them, and the most critical thing here is that your facing strips need to be longer than the end or edge of the quilt that you'll be attaching it to. So in this case, this first facing strip is probably two or three inches at least longer than the uh, mini quilt I'll be attaching it to. And you'll see the reason for that later. One point to remember is that if your quilt is bigger than this mini, which measured about 24 inches square. If it's a bigger quilt, you're going to make longer strips and they need to be several inches longer than the quilt because that slack is going to be taken up as you'll see uh, in the next couple of steps. Now here's an oops and it's a real one. I cut my facing strips too short really too short on the left and right and exactly equal on the top and bottom. But you don't want equal size strips because your quilt and the facing uh, strip need to be unequal in length. The facing strip needs to be longer. So what to do, what to do if you realize you've made the strip too short, you just add some extra fabric. And when I'm adding fabric, I keep the joining seam at least three inches away from where I think the strip is going to end. In this case, I have the shorter strip. Uh, so I'm gonna add some fabric down here, but I'll probably join it up here or make it really much longer down here because I don't want the joining seam to end up at the very corner of the quilt when I start to put it on. Now, of course, for bigger quilts, you're going to have to join those uh, strips to make long enough strips anyway. Here's the first step. Take all four of your facing strips and turn a hem under on only one side uh, and press that hem very, very crisp. This will be your hand sewing edge. Now there's a sewing sequence that we use to attach the facing strips to the quilt. You're gonna start, first of all, by sewing your strips to the longest 
two sides first. In this case, for me, it was side one and side two because this mini quilt was not exactly square. It was about an inch longer in the width than it is in the length. So I started with strips one and two, and then I sewed on strips three and four. In other words, you're sewing opposite sides on each time. Starting with the first strip, you're going to start on the front of the quilt by sewing the first facing strip with the right side of the strip facing the right side of the quilt. So it's right side to right side. Remember I said, we're gonna start by sewing these on on the front and end up by finishing them on the back. You're gonna start at the top edge and I usually pin. And here I would adjust it so that my facing strip really is lined up exactly with the edge of the quilt. If I've got a little, batting showing, I'll just trim that off just to make a nice clean edge. Um, you're going to sew it down with a normal quarter inch seam straight down to the very end of the quilt. Now, here's a tip about keeping everything straight and even. As you sew the facing strips on, you're going to gently pull or tug the quilt, which is on the bottom here, so that it is laying really flat and smooth. Now don't stretch your quilt out of shape. You're just trying to gently ease any of that wobbliness or curviness so that it's nice and flat and really parallel to your facing strip. So here you see me just gently pulling, then pinning, and then I'll sew down almost to the edge of this pin then I'll go back and I'll gently pull and put into place the next section of the facing strip. So it's back and forth, gently aligning, pin, sew, and move on. So with the first two strips, you're going to sew exactly to the end of the quilt. This is strips one and two. And then you're going to clip them off as it's shown here, so that it's parallel to the edge of the quilt. Now you only do this for the first and second strips and they are sewn on opposite sides of the quilt. Now you're ready to attach strips three and four, which will also be going on the opposite, the remaining two opposite sides. Starting with the third facing strip, you're going to position it so that it is about one inch from the end or edge of your quilt. And here's an important tip. When you start pinning that facing strip down, make sure you put some pins in this area as well. You wanna make sure that the bottom layers, which is now your quilt sandwich and that first facing strip, you wanna make sure those layers, which are four layers, are really flat and smooth and that there's no wobbliness or buckle in that edge. If there is, it's going to be a problem uh, at the end of this process. So try to keep it nice and smooth and flat and do some extra pinning. In fact, I often put a pin here and a pin here to make sure everything stays in place. Then you're gonna sew that strip number three all the way almost to the end, but you're gonna stop about three inches from the end of the quilt. And the reason you're going to stop is that you have to now adjust or trim this area of the facing strip off because here's what you want. You want to trim this extra facing so that you again have this one inch of space between the end of that facing and the edge of the quilt, just like at the start when you started on this side. So you started with that one inch of space at the top, you'll have one inch of space at the bottom. So all I do is I just notice where the end of my quilt is and you see that on the yellow line on the left, that's the end of the quilt. 
I just folded the fabric back and did a thumb crease here, took my scissors, cut it off there, and then I ended the sewing all the way to the end. So I started up sewing again all the way to the end of the quilt, same, with the same quarter inch seam. And here it is finished. You'll see the two parallel, the two rows of stitching rather, that cross and there's an important intersection right here. Here's what you're gonna do at that intersection. The next step on each of the four corners is to sew a diagonal line of stitching straight through that intersection that will stabilize the corner of your quilt. And I usually sew that stitching twice. I go back over it again. Then at the end, I will clip a little bit of fabric off that corner, not too much because you don't want to destabilize those lines of stitching, but just enough to take some of the bulk out of that corner. Now you're ready to finish sewing. And now you're gonna start go to your hand. Uh, of course, you've now attached all four of your binding strips. I'm sorry, your facing strips. Strips one and two, and then three and four. Then you simply turn that facing over to the back. It's sort of like turning a pillowcase inside out. Uh, and you're going to start pressing. But before you do that, use some sort of, of sharpish tool, not too sharp, uh, to poke out those corners. Do not use your scissors or a stiletto or anything too sharp because it will poke a hole in your quilt. If you find that there's really a lot of bulk in there, turn it back inside out again, clip a little bit of bulk out of there and turn it back again so that you get a nice crisp corner. But again, don't use scissors uh, and don't starch anything uh, at this point as you start to steam press. And here's the pressing. I usually start pressing from the front of my quilt because for me, that's the most important side. I really wanna make sure that that backing isn't peeking out from under the uh, front of the quilt. So here's my facing. I would just use my fingers to turn it under, just turn it under, hold it. As you can see, my finger right here in the corner holding it down, and then I'm going to press gently and slowly in this direction, in this direction. Using steam, but I do not use starch when I start pressing. So I'm pressing from the front, mostly from the front, then I'll turn it over to the back and press some more. Now, as you can see on this section of the quilt, there's a little bit too much of the front of the quilt showing on the back. I would maneuver that so that they're really parallel, like you see here, uh, and uh, nothing is showing from the back or the front. It's really a parallel edge. And again, continue to steam. Once you get that edge pretty crisp, you might want to hit it with a little bit of very light starch or best press or flatter just to really stabilize it, but don't heavily starch it just in case you have to go back and adjust later. So here's the front of the quilt again. I can probably get a little bit more of that corner poked out. I would go back and do that. But as you can see, it's a nice clean edge here on the front. And then I put some pins or clips before I start to hand sew the back. For large quilts, I only pin one side at a time. So here it is from the back. Uh, I'm about to hand stitch. I've hand stitched up in here, up in here. And I'm down at this end and I look forward and I see, oh, I probably can get that a little flatter and more square. And here's a little bit of my front is showing a little bit more than I like. So I would take the clips out poke that edge out, come back and adjust this a little bit, press it some more, more steam, and uh, come back and, and repin it so it's ready to be hand sewn. And here it is finished. 
nothing showing from the front and of course nothing showing from the back totally parallel my hand stitching on these on this inside is uh, with a uh, binding needle which I like to use uh, it's by Fonz and Porter I'm not a sponsor and uh, I like them because they're nice and strong but they're not too long I also match my thread to the facing strip and usually my facing strip and backing match a little bit more than they do here in the sample but I wanted you to really be able to see it clearly so that's it PDF download of this uh, handout is available on my website carolwildshaw.com and uh, these are my two books madly modern quilts and patriotic modern quilts you can get them at local quilt shops or on Amazon and please visit my blog because I will be uploading a lot more modern patterns in the very near future. Thank you so much and enjoy making your face binding.